Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the Artif Noir Show. The show where we meet loads of different people, we ask them loads of different questions, you get information you never had before, you didn't even realize you needed this information, nor did I, to be honest, but it's there now, we've got to share it, you might as well do something with it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for coming to my debut show at the Leicester Square Theatre, Talk Roti to Me. It was a wonderful success. It was a great honour, really, for me to do my first show at the Leicester Square Theatre, my first solo show, 60 minutes of me. So many of you came and put up with it. I really appreciate it, everybody who came. And hopefully, hopefully, in the future, we'll have some more. Some more, we will. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this week I read a wonderful piece of news and I want to share this with you, okay? In Pakistan, there was a pilot, a PIA pilot, okay, I think you might know where this is going already, but anyway, there was a PIA pilot, okay, he was going to fly a, a plane from Lahore to London to New York, very long flight, okay, with a stop in the middle in London, okay, he was sitting there minding his own business, he picked up the menu for the flight, and he saw that his favourite sandwich was not being served on this flight, his favourite sandwich was not being served on this flight, he was absolutely livid. He said to the cabin crew staff, they were from a different company to him, he said to them, I am refusing to fly this plane unless you get me this sandwich. And that was that. Now the cabin crew staff are going absolutely mental, of course, because they've got 400 passengers on this plane and they all have to get to London or New York or wherever it is they have to get to. And they're all there, they're all on this plane and he's refusing to fly it because his favourite sandwich isn't on the flight. Could you imagine that? So they did what any sane cabin crew crew Oops, cabin crew crew yeah of course he did they did what any sane cabin crew crew would do and they rang this guy's boss they rang the pilot's boss at PIA headquarters wherever they are and they rang them and they said to them listen your pilot is refusing to fly the plane because we don't have his favorite sandwich and the guy's boss has replied do you know what? You guys need to go and get him that sandwich because if you don't get him that sandwich, that plane ain't going nowhere. I love it. That's how much of an importance we place on food in Pakistan. If you don't have the right sandwich, you can't fly a plane. If you don't have the right food, the right nutritional intake, you can't fly a, fly, fly a plane. And I imagine all the passengers had complete sympathy with the pilot as well. They were probably like, you know what? I'm going to be late to whatever it is I need to get to in London. But this guy needs a sandwich. Sort it out, cabin crew staff. Food is very important. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the other day I went to watch my first ever league football match in the UK, okay? I'm not really a big fan of football, but I wanted to go and watch a league match. It was between Accrington Stanley and York City, okay? York City and Accrington Stanley in the football league, right, of the UK. It's obviously not the Premiership or any of the big games, but it was still really fun. Anyway, I got there and I went to the stand to buy a bottle of water. I got my bottle of water. They wouldn't let me back into the stand unless I took the bottle cap off the bottle. And what they wanted to do was, they didn't want to take anything off me. They just wanted to take the bottle cap off me. They refused to let me into the stand with my bottle cap from my bottle. When I asked why, why can I not get, onto this, uh, get into the stand with my bottle cap, they said, well, you know, you might get angry and throw it at the players. Now, if I'm getting angry at the players, what am I likely to throw at them? A bottle cap or the bottle? Now, ladies and gentlemen, enough of that, enough of my stuff. It's time that we go and meet our guest. We've got a wonderful guest. I'm very excited to interview her. So let's get to it right now. Joining me this week, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very special guest. And I'm really pleased that she's joining us. It's the Pakistani princess of pop, Miss Annie Khalid. Thank you so much for joining us, Annie. My pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. This is really exciting, okay? I mean, I've been listening to your song for years and years and years. Mm. You've recorded many songs. I mean, obviously, there's the one that everybody listens to, which is Mahia, and we all love it, obviously. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Okay. How are you? Good. How are you? I, I'm, I'm great. Absolutely wonderful. Cool. What are you doing these days? I'm just chilling, you know, just chilling, um, just chilling out and just um, working on new music. Is that what you do when you chill out, you work on new music? Yeah, yeah. Because they're not the same thing, chilling and working a lot. Well, when thing. you do something that you love, uh -huh. um, it doesn't really, it doesn't really classify as work, does really? it? Really? Yeah, it's never, just... You're never in the studio, like one of those long sessions when you're recording and like your, your, your producer, I imagine, I'm just imagining from context here, but your producer isn't like making you re-record hooks and things like yeah, that? Yeah, there's a lot of re-recording and you know, stuff like that, but when you have such a passion for what you do, it uh -huh. doesn't. You don't. It doesn't make a difference. You, I could go on for hours and hours and hours. Just and recording. Yeah, the excitement in the studio because you're creating something, you're uh -huh. making something, and you know. And then just when you when you 
recording and you're listening back and you're you know you're adding new things and hooks and verses and you picture this visual in your head about how the video is going to be how your fans are going to react wow and it's just the whole process is so exciting there's a lot of conceptualizing going on mm -hmm. there i imagine so tell me we're going to get to all of this stuff right how did you start as a singer so because i've heard a story i don't know if it's true or not i want you to confirm it okay okay, okay this is what i've heard right. okay that you were humming Right, something yeah. one day, yeah. right, and one of your friends or relatives heard it and said, "You know what? She's really good. She's got. A, she's catching the melody. Yeah. You've got to go and record something professionally." Yeah. Is that close? Almost, almost like okay. that. Basically, what? Well, yeah, um, I was humming something, and um, I write a lot, and I've been writing poetry ever since I can remember. Probably since I was about six or something. Wow. And, um, That's a weird thing to do when you're six. Yeah, yeah. Well, at six, you know, and comparing my poetry from then till now, it's obviously my priorities were different back well, then. Well, hey, yeah, I mean, six year old poetry, I can only imagine. Well, but it was still really good, you know? I, I'm it's sure quite it was, deep, uh, you know? Better than six, mine, I'm sure. For you know? a six year old. Yeah, um, I still have all of those, you know, diaries from then till uh -huh. now. You know, my dad actually keeps them all safe. Oh, well, that's really sweet. Yeah, he's got all of them from that age up till now. And, um, you know, and I remember back then I was just, obviously I wasn't six when uh -huh. I did Mahi, but you know, I was maturing as a poet, if you'd call it, okay. I wouldn't call it a lyricist or anything. Uh -huh. um, and um, that was it, you know, my dad knew somebody. I was in Lahore at the time for my summer holiday. Awesome. So dad had, you know, he's got loads of friends in the media and this was before I had obviously entered um, the industry uh -huh. and um, met with somebody. Um, he said this is really good. It was obviously in English because uh -huh. I can't write in Urdu. I mean, I can write Urdu, but I can't, you know, that I'm, fluency can't be poetic sure. and I can't write lyrics. You can write your name, Urdu. right? I can write more than my name. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I can do my name. That's all. That's it. That's my party <laughs> trick in Urdu, really? right? So I'm sitting with my friends and stuff, and I'll be like, look, I can write my name. <laughs> And that's it. And, that's and then I'll read the you know when they put the news channels on and like you're like yeah one news or geo news and they read it really slowly. Slowly, and by Just the time like, you get one, ka, ka, <laughs> ka, 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 Karachi, Karachi. I said Karachi, and you get yeah. really excited yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So sorry. So you were saying you're in Lahore. Well, you're, you're actually born in Lahore, right? I was born there. Yeah. Cool. So when did you trans? When did you come back to the UK? Um, I don't know. I must have been four or five months. Okay. I think. Four or five months. Um, yeah. Oh wow. When we okay. came back here and um. But then, you know, I, I lived there for a long time as well, kind of, you know, as soon as Mahia kicked off, uh -huh. um, you know, I just all of a sudden kind of developed this fat following and uh -huh. this expectation of more songs and more, and then, you know, public appearances, uh -huh. concerts, and I figured the best thing would be to, it would be to live there and, you know, and, and, and work there. Absolutely, so. and of course, I mean, you, mentioned, you touched on Mahia, it's still unbelievably popular, right? Yeah. And if you go to like a Bollywood night in London, which I sometimes do, Right, it's mm -hmm. it, you know it's, it's still playing. You'll still hear it every now and again. I know that it was on the soundtrack. There was a remix version of the yeah. soundtrack of the film of Arapan. That's for Arapan. Yeah, right. And yeah. did you have to re-record it for that film? Um, I did because apparently um, my accent was actually not that great. Because I mean, obviously, uh, you know, now I can speak very well Urdu. My Urdu, my accent's really good. Uh -huh. You know, I don't sound English or anything like that, and I don't have that British. What's that conversation like? Change. Your accent's not. Right. No, it was just, you know, there were some Hindi words that I wasn't able to pronounce that with the Hindi accent. No. So, yeah, I had to kind of, you know, I needed some assistance with that. Um, but it was okay, it was good. Yeah, it, it, I, I wouldn't have, it worked out for me. I wouldn't have heard it and thought that you couldn't speak Urdu or Hindi anyway. It sounded, it sounded good to me. So whatever yeah. you did or whoever it was that worked on you, keep them on the payroll. I think that was a good thing. Thanks. So anyway, so uh, let's go back to this Lahore thing, right? So yeah. you were born in Lahore, obviously, yes. and you, you, you spent time back there, I imagine, after Mahia yeah. kicked off. Do you feel a connection to Lahore? More than any other country in the world, any city. other city. Yeah. So really, 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 why, why more than any other city in the world do you feel this connection? I don't know. I just think, you know, I, uh, I was born there. Every time I land in Lahore, uh -huh. or just in Pakistan, anywhere in that country, any city, uh, for that matter, I just feel like, wow, I'm home. You know, I get that feeling like when I land, I'm home. I do that when I go to Lahore and I walk, I drive through MM Alam Road, mm. right, and I see the Pakistani Nandos, and I just, you know, it's that that beautiful whiff hits you, and you just mm. like, I really am home. Yeah. And you know, it's weird that Pakistani Nandos would do that to me because you know you've just gone seven thousand miles. Pakistani Nandos, um, they have uh, really good 
really good. They have different things it, on the they menu. They do, right? And more, more, you know, more masala and more. They have more that Pakistani touch to they their. They make an effort, right? To their, yeah. And it's more aesthetic as well. The stuff that they. they oh, they, you've had the the long. Yeah, that the one thing. You know the what's dangling. It? Yeah, it's, it's like, like a, chicken on like some kind of skewer. Yeah, but right? it's kind of hanging in front of yeah, you. Yeah, really I think cool. it looks incredible. I mean, I didn't even eat it. I made my my mum eat it, but I just wanted to see it. You know. No, they've got uh, some great dishes. They do. Pakistani they do. Dishes. They absolutely do. Ladies and gentlemen, you're joining us uh, on TV Apex. This is Atif Nawaz show. We're chatting with Annie Halid. This is so much fun. Uh, right now, we're going to take a look at what you guys think this week. It's my wonderful. It's I love this segment so much because I talk to people or we find out from people what they feel about a specific topic. And this week, it's time for that one more time. Plain, definitely. <laughs> Three. Oh, plain. Oh, uh, twelve. By plain? Yes. What is plain? Plain. Ah, train. Plain. Uh, plain, of course. Plain. A train. A plane. Plain. Plain. Train. Train. I like a train. Train. Oh, you crazy bunch of wonderful people. I love hearing about your things every week. Wonderful. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Especially Mr. China. I'm watching out for you. We're talking, of course, to Annie Halid right now, the princess of pop in Pakistan. Do you like that label, by the way, the princess yeah, of pop? Yeah, I love it. Do you like it? Do people call, what do they call, they call it the princess of pop or the Pakistani princess of pop? Uh, in Pakistan, it's the princess of pop because uh -huh. I'm in Pakistan. Uh -huh. But outside of Pakistan, yeah, it's the Pakistani. I guess. It's like when you go to China, they don't, you don't call it Chinese food, you just call it food. You call it food. You call it food. Call so it. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about, you know, Mahia was like the big breakthrough moment for you, obviously. You know, yes, and then since then, you've obviously gone on to work with, you know, so many, you worked with Beanie Man, which I imagine was quite exciting. Beanie Man. You know, what, 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 we'll talk about Beanie Man in a second. So tell me, you know, that process, because you've got this rare, you know, you've got this rare spectrum going on of being like someone in Britain who does a song, goes to Pakistan, and then is a part of a Bollywood film. So what is that process like for a Pakistani artist working in a Bollywood film? I get asked that question a lot, especially when I did the movie and I came back and uh -huh. everybody wanted to know what was it like. Um, to be really honest with you, it's just, it's just the same as working in any entertainment industry in the world, you know, um, because of the success um, of, you know, Alhamdulillah of my career, I've been able to travel uh -huh. and work in different places and different industries, be that, you know, like you said, I was with, I was in Jamaica with Beanie Man, you know, I've worked, um, you know, in the American music industry, I've worked in the Indian music industry and in Pakistani and it's the same wherever you go. Uh -huh. um, with the Indians especially, because of the fact that we're so similar in so many ways, you know, I think the only differences that have been created are by the politicians. I really feel when you go to that country, you don't, there is really not much of a difference between them and us. Uh -huh. And and so, the, so is the process, you know, a camera is a camera, uh -huh. you know, um, a set is a set. Uh -huh. Um, uh, you know, and that's really, that's, so that's all it is, you there's know? There's no difference between a Pakistani camera and an Indian camera? Absolutely not! So there you go, everybody who thought there was a difference, there's no difference between a Pakistani and an Indian camera. Annie Khalid, you heard it here first, <laughs> okay. Right, now tell me, what was it like working with Beanie Man? It's fun, it was so fun. It was kind of daunting because he's, you know, he's Beanie Man. Uh -huh. um, but it was amazing, you know, he, he's the kind of guy um, that when he's in, you know, when he's in an atmosphere, he kind of really lightens the mood. Uh -huh cracks jokes, uh -huh. makes you laugh, includes everybody that's around him, uh -huh. doesn't make anyone feel left out, you know, from, you know, from myself to, you know, the dancers to, you know, the cameramen to uh -huh. the, just the guys that were like holding the lights and the reflectors. I mean, he will include everybody. Can I ask you something about Beanie Man, okay? And don't take this the wrong way, this is just something I've heard, okay? Yeah. Is it true that Beanie Man farts a lot? What? <laughs> is it true? I've, I've genuinely heard this. I've read this on the really? website that he, he's like he's got some kind of issue. He farts a lot, no, apparently. No, I don't think so. Not that you remember. No, I don't remember. You him. don't remember. You can't no. confirm or deny. Yeah, I'd say I'm kind of in between. In between. One. Okay, fair enough. Okay, it was stab in the dark. But I, I had heard this about him. So, and you're the only person I know that's, <laughs> that's, that's funny. you know actually been in the same room <laughs> as Beanie Man. So hey, I thought it's worth a try. Okay. Now, one thing, I, everybody, I, I imagine you get this asked a lot as well, right? Your hair. It's really distinctive, right? It's like there's all sorts of cur curliness going on, okay? Yeah. Is that natural? Yes. This, your hair is just naturally like that? I don't wake up every morning and curl it, if that's what you're asking. But you wake up in the morning and it's just like that? Yeah. 
<laughs> it pretty much is just like that. Have you ever tried to straighten it? Um, I do sometimes. I did on the New Year. Uh -huh. uh, I went out with my um, cousins and my friends, uh -huh. and we, you know, they were just insisting that I do something different. Uh -huh. So I did straighten it. Did you have to start like three days earlier just to make uh, sure? kind of, you know. <laughs> it was. It is just one of those things. Every time I do it, it'd be once in a blue. Uh -huh. But I'll do it, and I'll tell myself never again. But then I do do it again, like maybe once in a year. Uh -huh. But it is a, it is that kind of thing where I have to plan it in, adv in uh -huh. advance. Uh, you know, um, I have to keep five hours before, five hours after free. Wow. Anything can happen. Wow. Five hours. I mean, I'm being realistic. You know, I mean, seriously, it's like that because you know, if you've ever seen somebody brush out curly hair, sure. You know that. Hey, I sympathize. It takes me about five hours to get this right as well. Just in <laughs> case you're wondering, five hours. That's it, bang on. No, but that's just for straight though. When, it, when it's just like this, it doesn't really it doesn't take enough. Do you, I mean, imagine when you're you know, out and about, people still recognize you, right? And they're yeah. like, hey, and you know, when you've got the straight hair, do people still recognize you? Yes. Even with the straight yeah, hair? Yeah. Well, that's awesome, right? Yeah. Then you feel like, you know, I'm super famous. Because <laughs> okay? people recognize me with the straight hair. That's awesome. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying this chat, okay? Uh, I want to ask you about uh, the single you did after Beanie Man, which is the one, the most recent single, okay? How did that come about? And, you know, what's the next single that we can expect? Um, Doje Yaad Kiyo is just, um, you know, with Rishi. Um, no. And Rishi and I, we have the same management as well. Okay. So, um, you know, the fact that we're managed by the same team, it just kind of seemed natural to collaborate um, with each other and um, I think before I had signed to the management that I'm with now I was you know um, freelance I was in England especially in Pakistan I was under management but over here I didn't really have anybody representing me uh -huh. um, but still you know I got you know Rishi and I we got in touch with each other and we were like you know let's meet up next time I'm in I'm in England uh -huh. and I, I was I was here one day and you know we, we hung out and we spoke about you know possibly doing something together but it didn't really because of the fact that we were so busy and I was in a different country most of the time uh -huh. nothing really happened and then you know all of a sudden when I was signed to um, the people that I'm signed to now my current management you know Rishi was signed to them maybe just two three months after I was uh -huh. and I thought wow you know then my manager was like, you know, the next best thing to do now is to get you two together in a studio, and that's what we did. Fantastic. And that process of collaborating with another artist, you know, especially someone like Rishi. Yeah. What, what was it like? Because I, I, as you say, you write your own stuff, and yeah. you, you're writing all the time. Yeah. How do you kind of um, bring those two? Because I imagine Rishi writes as well. He does. So trying to bring those two ideas together, how do you do it? Uh, you know, with Rishi, it wasn't even trying. It uh -huh. was just we just hung out. We went to the studio. And we just, you know, uh, he, you know, he was throwing ideas at me. I was throwing ideas at him, uh -huh. playing some beats, you know, listening to reference songs because you know you get inspired by a lot of the music that you listen to yourself, and that reflects in your music. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's all we were doing, just playing around with music the whole day, and we got it. We just, it was like that. When when the inspiration came, it was just literally a five second thing. And um, we were so excited, we were jumping up and down, we were dancing, and we were playing the song, calling our manager, you know, and it was fun. And with Rish, it's like that. He's such a cool guy to uh -huh. work with. And, um, you know, I've been a fan of his, to be uh -huh. honest, for like years. I think he was definitely one of the pioneers for Asian music. Absolutely. You know, I mean, he really paved the way for people oh, yeah. like us, you know. And, um, you know, he's a legend in his own right, but when you're around him in the studio, He's such a humble guy, and you know, you almost you're at such ease with him, and uh -huh. it's so easy to kind of, you I know, imagine. open to ideas. And, and he's things. worked with so many, you know, really famous artists, and you he's know, he's worked with Britney Spears. I love Britney, so yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Know. I think I, I, you know, I'm going to admit to this. I actually own that single, which he's done the remix on, yeah. but only because Rishi, you know, he did the yeah, remix. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's the only reason. That's the you're absolute a closet only Britney fan. Yeah, hey, I'm not a closet Britney fan. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. I've been to two different Britney Spears concerts. Oh my god. Two different ones, and I was hey. older than I like to admit when I went as well. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're in there conversation. <laughs> with, we're in conversation <laughs> with Annie Hunter. Uh, we've been talking so much about the music. It's time for us to enjoy some of Annie's music. Here it is.
Wow, I love it. I'm sure you guys loved it too. That was beautiful, amazing music video. That it, just, I really envy the kind of work you guys do, you know, because mm. you get to go on stage. You know, I, I, I mean, I get on stage as well because I'm a stand-up comic, and I tell jokes, and they're like, ha ha ha, very funny, nice. I'll take a picture, selfie on Facebook, blah blah blah. But you guys are the, uh, you guys are on walls in posters. You know, you guys are on billboards. Like the singers are the, you know, these are the guys that are worshipped properly. Yeah. Do you have like any crazy intense fans? I do have some, yeah. I've had, I've got some, yeah. Like that contact you all the time. Yes. Like stalkery. A few. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow, and how do you deal with that? Um, you really have to um, know, you know, what the, set your limits basically uh -huh. because um, some of the time uh, these fans can become really um, attached uh -huh. um, to the point where, you know, sometimes you're just saying hi, you reply to somebody's message and you know, and you know, um, you can't obviously reply to every single person out there, but you do try and I do personally anyway, try to reply to as many people as I can. But then it's without first reply, they expect another one and another one and another one. Of course. And sometimes they can do really stupid, crazy things, sure. and you know, um, and it kind of, it's, it's, it's crazy because it makes you feel so guilty uh -huh. and puts so much pressure on you. but. They have to understand that you know you can only do so much, and um, I'm so grateful to all of these fans out there because it, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am today. Of course. But at the same time, can't personally as much as I would love to, I can't personally thank every single one. Of course. You know, so they just need to understand that. No, absolutely, and that's not unreasonable at all by any means. Um, I wanted to ask you, right? Okay, because you seem like you know you're in a really good way. You're obsessed with your music and you're always writing and you love being in the studio and collaborating and creating yeah. music and having fun and being on stage mm. and that's wonderful, right? When you're not doing all that, okay, yeah. when you've got an off day, okay, there's no music going on, yeah. your radio's broken, okay, oh, man. What, uh, what are you going to do, what are you going to do, how do you spend a day when <laughs> you're not working? You know what, I'm such a buddy like that, <laughs> I like to read, I love reading, okay. like everything and anything, I love novels, I love romance, What's comedy. the last thing you read? Um, I read a book called From My Sister's Lips. Okay. Um, it's, I can't remember, I'm not good with um, names, uh -huh. so I can't remember who the author was, but it was a book about um, a girl who comes from a, um, a non-Muslim family, uh -huh. and kind of accepts Islam, and then her journey um, about it through, 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 you know, how people react, uh -huh. um, how she's double-minded about wearing a hijab, uh -huh covering herself and just you know just basically I think it was based if I'm not mistaken on a real life story mm -hmm. of a girl who actually went through all of this but mm -hmm. it's very interesting um, my brother gave it to me it was uh -huh. beautiful and that was the last book I read but I love reading books like holding books in my hands uh -huh. I, I know the Kindle and all of that and the you iPads are really like e -reading. I don't like e-reading like uh -huh. I just I feel like I need I need a book in my hand I'm so old school like that and I have a bookshelf and I want to see my books uh -huh. you know I don't want to have them saved in like an iPad or something. I, I used to be exactly the same way okay I, I have I have a ma I mean my degree was in literature so I ended up reading like hundreds and hundreds of books and I still have them all and mm -hmm. I love them but but I have to say, in terms of space saving, and my family and cohabitants will, you know, confirm this, that it's so much handier to have all your books kind of there. It makes sense. And it saves space and Definitely. it's environmentally friendly. Of yes. course, but, but I, I like, I just like to hold a book in my hand. Crack open a spine. Well, I feel it, you yeah. know, in my hand. Yeah, like absolutely. That, so, yeah. That's a really artist, you know, it's a really artist theme. Okay. What about, like, what else do you do with the spare time? Do you go out? Do you, uh, do you, do you enjoy it? Cooking? Do you enjoy? I do. Film? I like baking. baking. I'm actually, yeah. I think you know, one day I will have my own bakery. Really? Yes, I will. Is it true that you have your own cafe as well in uh, Lahore? I did have my own lounge um, oh, in wow. Lahore, but then um, I I got married and then I closed it down. So. Oh right. Okay. What kind of lounge was it when it was there? Um, it was a. It was just a cafe. Uh -huh. So it was called the AK Lounge, the Ali Khalid Lounge. Cool. And um, it was really, it was awesome. Um, it was such an amazing experience. I would have fans come in from all over the country. Amazing. Just to go there, uh -huh. and it was the loyalty and the love, you know. Um, and it was amazing because I'd have fans coming in from places like Karachi, Okara, Gujranwala, you know, places you know in the Punjab, in, especially in Punjab, um, really far away. And they uh -huh. bring gifts and things. Oh, that's so cool. And they give it to the manager, you know, at the reception, and say, you know, please give this to Annie. And then by the end of the week, I'd, you know, all the gifts would be accumulated, and I'd get like. 
a huge box full of so really cool. cute things. And did you decorate the rest? Did it have like any memorabilia? Or um, it, yeah, because it was it was about me, right? So it was the AK Cafe. I mean, we had we had posters and stuff, but it was more of it was um, just a very kind of like an American diner uh -huh. almost. That's the kind of food we served, and we had um, we had hookah. So we had um, hookah, and we had haluka, which is which is um, the environmental environmentally friendly, oh, cool. okay. uh, healthy version uh -huh. um, of the actual shisha itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had that to the organic shisha. We had that. Oh, fantastic. And it was amazing. I can only imagine. It sounds really good as well. I mean, any chance that might come back or? Uh, I want to open one here now. Oh, really? In yeah, London? Yeah. Well, there's a, I mean, there's more scope for I suppose in Lahore, they've, they've banned shisha and the hookah yeah, these days. Yeah, yeah. I so think they have, but we had organic. Oh, okay. Too, so that's not that's allowed. That's I suppose that's allowed. not the that's not the killer. There's no coal or anything involved in so that. We, so then we might see an AK cafe in London at some point. AK Lounge Part Two, maybe. AK Lounge Part. Wow. Okay. That's that's something to look forward to, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. AK Lounge Part Two is maybe coming in London. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. But that but that goes for my that goes with my love for baking and you know stuff like that. I like cooking too, but what I can love you bake? baking. What's the best thing you bake? I can bake everything actually. Brownies. Brownies are just so easy. Cookies? To yeah, I can make cookies. Really? You can make cookies? I from yeah, I can bake. I can actually make and then bake from scratch. You can make cookies from scratch? Yeah. I can I can I get the feeling it's not that hard and it's just me that's thinking it's hard. I don't think anything is hard in this world and, and just, you know, if you put your mind to something, if, especially if you have a passion for it, then uh -huh. it's not difficult. Uh, I guess so. I can't stand cooking. Which yeah, is why if it's you really can't difficult. then it's you're not gonna just like walking it. into the kitchen and turning what do you call that thing with the thing? Oh the, my god, the hob? The hob, that's it. <laughs> See, turning the hob on is hard. Um, god bless takeout is what I say. Oh my god. Um, we're in conversation with Annie Khaled and we're learning so much about you. This is interesting. She <laughs> likes to bake. We might get an AK lounge too. Okay. Beanie Man doesn't fart, apparently. <laughs> this upsets me. Uh, I don't know why, but this upsets me. We're going to learn so much more about you, Annie, okay? Yeah. Because right now is time for mm. the, the, the round that is famous, that has made the Art of Noir show famous, okay? It's time for the dangerous sheep round. Uh oh. Okay, Annie, you ready for this? Oh my god. Okay. Should I be scared? You should be scared because it's frightening, but loads of people have done this before you, and you're going to be the 20th person okay. to experience this. Okay, the 20th I'm so person. Honored. Okay, are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. You're going to catch the sheep, you're going to you're gonna answer the question, and then you're going to chuck the sheep back at me, okay? <laughs> okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, where would you go for for your dream holiday? Maldives. <laughs> Maldives, okay, great, 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 great. Well, what's your favorite place to go shopping? The mall. Which one? Any big one. Any big mall. Okay, Dubai, great. Dubai mall. Dubai, du mall. Dubai mall. Okay, Dubai that's mall. good and specific. I like it. Okay, do you prefer people with long hair or people with short hair? Long hair. Long hair. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, what's your favorite thing to eat? Ice cream. Ice cream. Any flavors? Every. Every flavor? Except for chocolate. E except for chocolate? Yeah. My God. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite sport? Basketball. Basketball? <laughs> NBA? No, I don't know. I just say what Okay, it basketball was the first thing that came to mind. I like it. Keep that spontaneity going. Your favorite movie of all time? Mean Girls. Mean Or Crossroads by Britney. Or Mean, mean Girls. Mean Girls? Yeah. And Crossroads. Or Crossroads. Okay, well, yeah. at least the genre is there. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Your favorite song? Can't be your own. Oh my god, it can't be my own. It can't movie. be your own. Oh god, um, uh. Crazy by Britney Spears. Crazy by Britney Spears. Well, there's a Britney theme going along here. Okay, yeah. I like it. Okay, uh, do you prefer traveling by train or by plane? Plane. Plane? Any day. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, do you prefer PCs or Macs? Max. Max, okay. One of those styly ones. Uh, what's your favorite cartoon? Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls? <laughs> did you, I hope you see the theme that's evolving here. Uh, okay, and who's your favorite celebrity? Britney Spears. Brit <laughs> <laughs> Britney Spears. Okay, fantastic. Do you prefer wearing heels or do you prefer wearing flats? Heels. Heels. Yes. Heels. Okay, good stuff. And the last one, what's your favorite foreign language? Urdu. Urdu is your favorite foreign it's language? It's a foreign language. It's a foreign it's language. A foreign it counts. Language. Well done, Annie Holly. You have passed the dangerous sheep round. Well done. You. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel good. You feel good. And yes. so you should. Thank you so, so much. All that Britney stuff as well. Mm. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, there we were, ladies and gentlemen. We just learned some wonderful things about Annie Hollid. Annie, thank you so much for coming on. Thank it's you been for an me. absolute delight to have you. you. And, then, and I, mean, I wish you all the success in the future. Thank I'm you. really looking forward to AK Lounge Part 2. I, you've got to make this happen. I right? will invite you to the opening. And you're going to teach me how to bake cookies. Cause I, that, but, but you don't like cooking, though. I know, but I like, I like cookies. But you like cookies. I love cookies. We can, we can work something out. We can out. work something mm -hmm. out. That's really cool. Annie, it's been a, a pleasure to have you and to learn about your hair, which is completely natural. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have any messages for your fans? I do. I 
I just want to say um, thank you so much for all the support and um, just keep supporting me, please. Um, join me on my um, social networks, um, Twitter, Facebook, and, um, and that's, that's about do you tweet? It. Do you tweet a lot? I do, and I do reply and talk to my friends. What do you, what do you tweet about mostly? Whatever I feel like. Whatever you yeah, feel like? In the moment. A bit of everything? I think Twitter is more like just a personal kind of public yeah. diary, isn't it? Do you have a live Maybe? tweet TV shows by any chance? Um, no. Like, I know, haven't done anything. Cricket or EastEnders or anything? Um, no. Do you never kind of watch? Because a lot of people do I that, don't watch TV much. Oh, of course, honest. yeah. You, 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 you can't live tweet when you're reading books, I guess. No. I must be like, no. Annie, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this week on the Art of Noir show. Join us again next week when we'll have another guest for you and we'll have another set of questions and we'll learn some more stuff about someone else. For now, this is Art of Noir's, your friend, your humsifer, saying, Kodafis.